right. So section 5.3, here we go. First of all, you have a triangle on your paper that's triangle X, Y, Z. You are told that if X, Y is equal to X, Z, If x, y is equal to x, z, then what do you think we can conclude? I know my picture's not drawn to scale. Go with it for right now. If x, y is equal to x, z, then, ready? The angles across from those are congruent. So I can put a congruent mark in y and a congruent mark in z. So if those two things are equal, then the measure of angle y equals the measure of angle z. All right. Now this is going to be describing, helping you describe relationships in triangles. You ready? The longest side has to be across from the biggest angle. The smallest side has to be across from the smallest angle. All right? The sides should have this, the sides across from the angles should have the same relationship as the angles that they're across from. So, that's theorem 5.9. The biggest, the longest side of a triangle has the biggest opposite angle. Smallest side across from smallest angle also, but the longest side of the triangle is across from the biggest angle. So if I give you triangle ABC like you have on your paper, ready? If that's triangle ABC, AC looks like it's the shortest. Does the angle across from AC look like it's the smallest? Shortest side should be across from the smallest angle and vice versa. So does this width right here look smaller than the other two widths? Okay, so we're going to across from that, we're gonna put one arc in that side because I put one congruent marking on it. Okay, it's not saying that those are equal to each other, but they should have the same relationship to the other types of sides. Now, if I tell you AB is the medium length side, what do you know about the other two angles? So if I tell you, let's see if you can apply this. Ready? If I tell you that AB is the medium length side, so it's longer than AC, but it's shorter than BC. What do you know about the other two angles? Thank you. What do you know about the other two angles in the triangle if I tell you that AB is the middle length side? Thank you. Anybody make that application? Yeah. So I know that AC is the shortest side. Therefore, angle B has to be the smallest angle. Now I'm telling you now that AB is the middle length side. So BC is the longest. Okay? What do you know about the angles? The angles across from the sides would only be the same if the sides across from them are the same. So, what did you say? They're all acute. They're all acute, possibly. If I know that B is the smallest, which one is the largest? Let's go there. C. C. A. A. Because A, I told you that this was the middle length side. Okay, if this is the smallest, then this angle is the smallest. That makes sense? 
If this is the, mid, the medium size, then the angle across from it is the medium size. If this is the largest side here, then the angle across from it is the largest side, or the largest angle also. All right, so we could put like two arcs in C and three arcs in A. Okay, they might all be different side. They, they should be the same relationship as the side they're across from. So therefore, if AB, if that length is larger than AC, then I can say that the measure of angle C is larger than the measure of angle B. That's an inequality symbol. That's bigger than. Okay, it's greater than. Yes? What goes in the blank? The long line? Um, Measure of angle C is bigger than the measure of angle B is the oh, biggest not opposite that point. angle. The biggest opposite angle. Right. So how do you know B is the smallest? How do I know B is the smallest? Because it's across from the... I told you AC was the smallest. Oh. If I don't tell you that, then it's hard to, it's hard to conclude that. Oh, okay. Okay. So like on our in our book or something and it'll tell us that. They're going to tell you things like which sides are longer than which other sides and you conclude that the angles across from those sides then have the same relationship. Do they always have the same? The longest side is always across from the biggest angle and vice versa. Does that make sense? Now, folks, think about that just a second. If you're opening wider, you're going to make a longer line across from it. So it's like if I don't open my angle as wide, then I'll have a smaller side across from it. Okay, so some of that is logical. Now, um, so in the blanks so far, you have the measure of angle Y equals the measure of angle Z up at top. You also have the biggest opposite angle in your blank for the theorem 5.9. And you now know that the measure of angle C has to be bigger than the measure of angle B if the sides across from them have that relationship. Theorem 5.10 says that the biggest angle of a triangle has the longest opposite side. The biggest angle of a triangle has the longest opposite side. So we just switch theorem 510 around. Largest opposite, largest opposite side. So it's like if you know that the if you know that the side across from an angle is the biggest side, you can conclude the angle across from it's the biggest angle. If you know that one of the angles is the biggest, you can tell me that the side across from that angle is also the biggest side. Okay? Now, in the next triangle, if you have triangle ABC, again, ready? If I tell you that angle B is smaller than, or is bigger than angle C, If I tell you angle B is bigger than angle C, ready? Or C is bigger than B. Uh, my drawing doesn't look like that. Let me change it. Ladies, I've about had enough of the chatting, just so you know. There, now that one looks like it maybe could be that way. Okay, so if the measure of angle C is larger than the measure of angle B, because that's what's pre-written for you on your paper. We could work with it the other way, but it's already pre-written for you, so we'll leave it that way. So if the measure of angle C is bigger than the measure of angle B, then what do you know about the sides? If B 
if C is bigger than B, what do you know about the sides? Remember, the angles should have the same relationship as the side they're across from. Go. And A, B is along the <coughs> side. Well, we know AB is at least longer than AC. It may not be longer than BC. Okay? The angles should have, the sides across from the angles should have the same relationship as the angles. So if C is bigger than B, if angle C is bigger than angle B, then the side across from angle C, which is AB, should be larger than the length across from angle B, which is AC. All right, let's do some examples. Because sometimes things make way more sense with numbers than they do with just theory. So here we go. You have the following triangle on your paper. I'm trying to draw it similar to that so that appearances don't throw you off. D, E, F. I'm telling you DE is 13, DF is 12, and EF is 14. What's the biggest angle and what's the smallest angle? B. Which answer are you giving me? The biggest angle would be angle D, that's correct. Because it's across from the biggest side. Which angle is the smallest? D. E, because it's across from the smallest side. Now, here's what people sometimes want to do that you're not allowed to do. I look at this side and I say that's one unit smaller than this one, so this has to be one degree smaller. No, that doesn't go that way, okay? They have to have the same relationship, but their measures are not transferable, okay? Largest side across from the largest angle, smallest side across from the smallest angle. So if I tell you that this triangle here, okay, triangle ABC, this is 60 degrees down here, this is 59 degrees here, all right? I want to know what the longest side and shortest sides are. So what's the longest side? Mm -hmm. To find this out, I should probably find the measure of angle A, because if it's bigger than angle B, then I will have a different answer than if it's smaller than angle B. Okay, so how could I find angle A? Plus subtract from 180. Very good. Okay, so you're going to take 180 and subtract 60 and 59. What do you get when you do that? You should get 61. That's true. So if I get 61 for that angle right there, now what's the longest side and what's the shortest side? You can now give me a definite answer, I think. A, B is the shortest side because it's across from the 59, which is the smallest angle. So A, B would be the shortest side. What's the longest side? B, C. B, C, because it's across from the biggest angle. That's what these two theorems tell you. All right, on the back. May I erase the board to some extent while you're flipping it over? Yeah. Okay? I I'm gonna you said we were only doing one. We are. This is all in section 5-3. Yeah. Okay. Are we going to hide? We'll get through for most of the rest. Okay. No. <laughs> so, there's just some blanks to fill in on the back. Let me tell you what they are. So the exterior angle inequality theorem, I won't spend time erasing. 
the exterior angle of a triangle is greater than either of the two non-adjacent interior angles. That's a lot of words. Greater than goes in the blank. Now let me see if I can explain it to you. First of all, all right, so you have an angle 1 outside of triangle ABC. All right. Let me explain what this theorem says. This theorem says that this angle has to be bigger than either angle B or C. Now, we learned a chapter or two ago that angle 1 equals B plus C. So yeah, angle 1 in and of itself has to be bigger than either of those two individually if it equals the two of them added together. All right? So. If I'm going to write an equation, the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C. You need to write that down, I think. Right? That's what measure of angle 1 is equal to. Therefore, I can say that the measure of angle 1 is greater than the measure of angle B. And I can also say... that the measure of angle 1 is greater than the measure of angle C. The angle symbols and my greater than symbols might look a little confusing. That's a greater than symbol. This is a greater than symbol. All right? The measure of the exterior angle has to be bigger than either individual interior angle it's across from. All right? Now, the triangle inequality theorem. The triangle inequality theorem says the sum of the lengths of two sides of a triangle is greater than the length of the third side of the triangle. Now, that gets a little bit interesting, but it goes with the front side of this paper. The angles have to have the same relationship as the sides they're across from. So therefore, I can take any two sides, any two sides, and it should be longer than the third side when I add the two sides together. Okay? You need to know that. So can you, well, let me, let me give you this. So therefore, now it's kind of questionable. If I take the two shorter sides, which it looks like are AB and BC, if I take those and add them together, I get something longer than AC. Absolutely. Okay, so in the blank about AC. So AB plus BC, yes, has to be bigger than AC. That is true. So the, if the lengths of two sides of a triangle are 8 and 11, so let me draw a random triangle up here. There's 8, there's 11. Give me what the third side has to be bigger and smaller than. So let's see. It has to be bigger than 3 because my two sides have to add up to be larger than the third side. And if I have 8 as my smaller side, I have to have a number bigger than 3 to add up to be bigger than 11. Okay, remember, any two sides have to add up to be larger than the third side. So this side has to be bigger than 3, but it also has to be smaller than any two sides added together. So if you add 8 and 11 together, you get 19. So it has to be smaller than 19. All right. All right. This inequality is not as difficult as it may have seemed to begin with. So I'm going to write this down. Let's see. You have the triangle drawn. Because of time, I'm not drawing it on the board. But we know that AB plus AC has to be bigger than BC. Okay, this is that example. Write that down on the example. You need to know that. Okay? 
It's already written down? Awesome. So if that's true, AB is 3x plus 1. So I'm just going to plug the expressions into that inequality to solve. So AB is 3x plus 1. AC is 4x minus 2. That needs to be larger than a than BC, which is 5x plus 7. Okay? How do you solve this inequality? Combine like terms. So 3x and 4x make 7x. Combine the 1 and the minus 2, and that gives me minus 1. That's greater than 5x plus 7. Now how do I solve the inequality from there? Subtract 5x will work very well so that you have all the x's on the same side. So 2x minus 1 is greater than 7. Add 1 and divide by 2. So add 1 to both sides. 2x is greater than 8. Divide by 2 and x is greater than 4. We had to divide an inequality just to review from Algebra 1. If you divide or multiply by a negative number, you would have to flip the inequality symbol. All right.